Okay. So what we're going to be talking about the, this evening is um, an Elementor project workflow. And we're going to focus on this, and it's going to be a series. And on this particular um, meetup, we're going to talk about the um, creating a starter site. And one of the benefits, the whole idea of the starter site is that you can create a, a WordPress installation that has all your plugins that you like to use already installed. You have your theme that you like to use installed and configured. You have your um, Elementor and Elementor Pro installed and configured and any of the other plugins that you might like to use. And we'll go over some ideas of what those plugins might be. Um, so why would you want a starter site? Well, you know, if you build web, WordPress websites regularly, Elementor websites, when you start a new website, you got you got to, uh, install WordPress, you got to install your plugins, you got to install your theme, and you got to set up all the licenses and do all the, the settings and tweaks and stuff every single time. And there are a bunch of settings in WordPress that, you know, you might miss if uh, you're, you know, rushing through. And if you have a, if you have a sort of a set starter site, and of course it can evolve over time, you know, as, as you discover, like for instance, my starter site two years ago had plugins in it that I don't use now because Elementor has built the functionality of those plugins into it now. So it'll change, but it always is easier for me to start. I just take the starter site, copy it over to a new WordPress install and I'm ready to go. But there's a little bit of work on the front end and consideration. So that's what we're going to talk about this evening. Um, first thing we'll talk about before we get to the starter, there's some sort of uh, support ideas to talk about. Let's have a, we'll do a quick talk about hosting and what you might need or want. When I'm looking for a host, and I have a host that I'm happy with, and I have been using them for about 10 years, but I've had hosts in the past that were a nightmare. Um, and I'll, Brian's heard the story, and I probably have said it. Some of you who are here may have heard it, but um, I, I finally just realized that you need quality WordPress hosting. So um, things that I look for in a, in a hosting service, is I want it to be a managed WordPress host. In other words, it's not like a you know a, some of the less expensive hosting. They host WordPress, they host Joomla, Drupal, regular HTML sites, all kinds of stuff. And and then you, if you call technical support, you might talk to somebody who, you know, they got it. You know, they're not. They can deal with. You know, if, you're, if your website's maybe offline, but if you start asking them WordPress questions, they don't really know sometimes. I've had that happen before. So it's good to have some a, a, a host that, the best thing would be if they specialize in hosting WordPress sites. Um, I like to have the, the host have, provide daily backups. So, and the longer, the better, you know, 30 days is good. Um, I like for, to have on-demand backups. In other words, if I, like when I'm going, to, if you've ever, depending on your host, if you've ever gone to update a plugin or a theme, it might give you a notice say, hey, we really suggest that you do a backup. Well, if you have a, a plugin doing the backup, then you can, it can be cumbersome to, Taking the backups not a not a big deal, but doing a restore can sometimes be time consuming. Uh, so if the host already does the backups for you and gives them a name, because some places do backups, you can do backups on demand, but the name of the backup is something like backup 
with the date and it says XYZ427. You can't tell what it's about. Where I like to be able to say, okay, this is the backup before I update the plugins or before I update the theme or before I enable experiments in Elementor, whatever it is. So if I break something, I can just immediately go back, click restore, and within two or three minutes, the site is back the way it is. I look for that in a hose. I'd like it to be free, fast, um, have fast uh, servers, provide free SSL certificates, which nowadays can be done with Let's Encrypt, and there's lots of people to do that. Um, like to have a CDN, which is a content distribution network. It means uh, it helps that your site run faster in the sense that let's say somebody's coming to your website from the Netherlands, let's say, and you're in Dallas. Well, there are, you know, a lot of these, these web companies have servers all over the world. So with a CDN, it, no, it, it puts your files all over the world in these different servers to where that if somebody's in the Netherlands and there's a server right next door in the UK, boom, it'll go to there rather than tr coming from Dallas. You know, it doesn't seem, it seem like it makes a difference, but when you are making a bunch of requests and they all have to travel so far, it can slow things down. Um, I like to be able to have the caching built into the, the host, the server. So I don't have to have caching plugins. Um, and I like to be able to clear the cache on demand. Another thing, if I'm updating a website, I wanna be able to clear the cache and be able to, and then reload the page. So I'm not, I'm getting the fresh new version. It's helpful if the, if the host provides migration tools. In other words, let's say you have a website that's hosted on one host over here, but you've got your new host. Some, some of them have tools that you can easily migrate the site from here to here without losing anything. Um, like them to have built-in security and malware scanning, uh, notification of security vulnerabilities. And then of course, really good support. So that's kind of my criteria and we all have our own. And I'll mention, I'm gonna mention the four, there's, there's, I don't know, hundreds, maybe thousands of WordPress hosts, but I'm gonna mention four that uh, people, and, and there's, there's probably some that you might like, like better, but four that I know that are, have really good reputations. And um, the one that I use most of, all the time, unless I'm doing something for a customer and they have a particular need to do it on a different host, is I use WP Engine. Um, let me start sharing my screen here. Uh, where is it? Oh, I've got so many windows open, I don't see it. You see my screen? We can. All right. Okay. Yeah, get my things in order here. Okay, so this is WP Engine, and and I'll move this down here. There we go. Um, and I'll put these links. Here, I can it's not your WhatsApp or something like that. Sorry, we're What's looking at your WhatsApp. WhatsApp? You're looking at what? Your WhatsApp or your text messages. Some chat screen you have. Use your teams. You and Jennifer Kuhn. Let me get out of that. That's a, uh, okay. So 
So let's try this again. You see in WP Engine? We are. Yes, we are. Okay, good deal. All right, so anyway, this is the one I use. And uh, all those things I, I talked about that I like, I can get here. Um, another one that's very popular is Cloudways. Um, I've only had limited experience with this one. Um, I re recently uh, rebuilt a site for a client on, on Cloudways because that's where they wanted to keep their site. And it's pretty good. Um, from all the, I hear lots of people talk about how, how good it is. I had a couple of issues with it. Um, like I mentioned before, I like to be able to um, run a backup at any time and I can, but I can't name it. So it's, if I was doing a bunch of backups while I'm doing maintenance, I wouldn't be able to find it, but um, it's reasonably priced and it's priced according to mostly how you use it. There's another one, um, Kinsta, which is very highly recommended by lots of people. Um, not quite as big as some of the others, but is very well respected. And then, um, then there's SiteGround. A lot of people like SiteGround. It's I think it's the maybe the least expensive, and um, so. Bear in mind the things that we've talked about uh, that um, what would what would be important for you for a host to be able to do, and I'm going to put the links to those things into chat. Okay, so so we then we have the idea of themes. Now with Elementor. Their themes, particularly elementary today, um, themes play less of a pivotal role than they used to. Because it used to be, unless you were, well, you know, you could, when I first started doing this, a lot of people coded themes from scratch. I mean, actually cut, coding everything from scratch, which obviously took a long time, it was uh, very labor intensive. And then every time WordPress updated, you'd have to, probably recode your theme. So it's a lot of work. Um, and then there's pre-made themes that you can buy or get for free off the WordPress repository. And, or you could buy them in the, all, in the marketplaces. There's big marketplaces for uh, themes. One of them is Theme Forest that has thousands of themes. Um, but there are some that are better than others, I, in my opinion. And then if, later on, if you, somebody has one that they're particularly fond of, well, you can mention that. Uh, one thing I would mention, as of WordPress 5.9, you don't want to use a block-based theme. Blocks are the, you know, like Gutenberg blocks. There are uh, not very many yet, but there's new block-based themes coming out. And if you have the block-based theme and you're using, and you have 5.9, certain parts of Elementor are not gonna work. So bear that in mind. But the, the two where the, the several that um, are recommended would be Astra, here, Astra, which is done by Brainstorm Force. They have a free version and a, and a paid version, the way the paid version works, you add a, a plugin called Astra Pro. Then there's uh, Generate Press. Which is very popular. And uh, so you got 4 million downloads. And then of course, there's the Hello theme, which is actually made by um, Elementor. And so, and then there's one called Page Builder Framework, 
So I'm going to put those in the chat. I don't, I'm not going to put the URLs. Um, okay. So, so you, after you pick your theme and you got your hosting, then we need to start setting things up. So we want to install WordPress on our host, in our hosting environment. So we just install a basic installation, an, an empty clean site with you know, just basic WordPress and then with a, the theme that comes with it. And then we would go into the settings. So what I've done is I've, I have a starter site that I, um, let me go here, here we go. Am I on the right thing? Yep. This is my WP Engine account. It's my WP starter site. And, and I have a bunch of plugins that I'll go over that, uh, in a second, but we wanna take a look at the settings. These are, this is all going to, we're all going to do this before we ever start building a site. And we're going to make a, a, this site that we can make a copy of and put it in a new installation and build on top of this. So, so we'll go, the, one of the first things we want to do is go to the settings. And then we'll go to general. You name your site. You want to make sure that these two things here, the URL and the site address are the same. Um, so it doesn't cause any confusion. Your administ if, this is, if you're the administrator, your email address, um, let's see anything else. Pick your date format. Uh, your time zone is kind of important. This, and rather than using UTC time, just when you go, you know, you'll, you might start out, uh, well, you can just uh, start typing New York and it'll find it. If you're in New York, if you're in California, you'd go to West Coast. Reason being is it, it gives accurate times of when your posts go live. So if let's say that you wanna schedule a bunch of posts in the future and you want them to all go live at 10 o'clock in the morning on eastern daylight time well you, your website needs to be functioning on eastern daylight time or eastern standard time um we talked about the email address um, let's see here probably don't want to tick the membership because you don't want anybody just anybody to register for your site unless you're set up to do that user default role best to use it as subscriber a subscriber can't do much damage uh, of course whatever language you're using at the time and then like if you are in europe um, you might use this time format but we're in the good old us of a and so we use this or this um, your site language and then we already talked about the time zone all righty then we go down to writing. There's not much to change here. Um, you'll set your categories once you start building your site. So the default is uncategorized. Your post format, they have different kinds of uh, post formats, but never really used any of those others, just the standard one. And if you are going to post v email there's some settings here i've not used that um, then there's the reading settings where as i mentioned we're recording this and i know i'm going quickly but you'll be able to uh, we'll post it so you can go back and look at it so you can follow along more closely here you want to set now i've already created a home page and a blog page there's nothing on it but i've created it just created a page so that I can set the 
home page to a static page and I pick which page is going to be the home page and I pick the blog page to be the post page. So when I'm setting up my blog page, I want to make sure, you know, that will be my archive for my posts because that's how WordPress and other plugins, they, they go by this setting to know where your blog is supposed to be. And um, you can set the number of blogs to show on your post and this uh, on your archive page. And this will actually override Elementor. Like, I don't know if you've ever run into it, you're doing your blog archive page and there's a setting in the, the post widget that says, how many do you wanna show? And maybe you put 12, but it's only showing 10. Well, it's getting that. So you can come back and change that. Um, let's see here. Uh, before you, while your site is in development, make sure that this little uh, item is checked. Search engine visibility, discourage search engines, send search engines from indexing your site. That will, um, this just, odds are they would never find it, but it's just a good idea to not have search engines crawling your site when it's not ready to go. And then of course you have to make, you know, have your checklist of launch checklist of when it comes time to launch the site that you uncheck that so the search engines can find you. So uh, then we can go to discussion. Now everybody has different thoughts on this. Most of my clients don't seem to want to have to deal with comments. Now, if you were a blogger, you would. So you can decide whether or not to allow people to submit comments or not. So you just, if you did, you check that. I don't uh, normally um, allow these first two have to do with, let's say I link to another blog. If I click this and I link to another blog, the website's gonna to try to attempt to notify the owner of that blog that they've been, we linked to them. If this is checked, you'd get a link for telling you that this some blog or some other place linked to your, your website. So everybody has their own choices on what they, they want to do. And these, I think these are fairly self-explanatory, the comment settings. And if you did allow people to submit comments, there would be all these things to check. Um, then we go to media. WordPress defaults to some particular settings. The thumbnail size is the 150 by 150. Um, but they have different defaults for medium size and large size. And I've changed these to 480 to 9999, and 1024 to 999. And I have the organize my files into folders checked. Otherwise, this isn't checked. All your, pick, all your images are just gonna go in one big folder. And that depending on how big your site is and how long it's been up, it could be hard to find your images. So then uh, we got permalinks. Permalinks are, let's see here, permalinks. It stands for permanent links. That's the, the, that's the link to um, the website. Let's see if we can find a different example. I'm just gonna go to the site, okay. This, whole thing is a permalink, that is called a slug. So just for, I think that will come up in a little bit. And um, out of the box, it kind of depends on the host, which, ones, which one of these is automatically selected. So you want to uh, choose, sorry? I thought somebody said something. You want to choose post name and and that'll automatically put that there so that your URL will look like your domain slash the post name. Now, if you have a category, you know, if you have parent pages, 
and then child pages they'll be in between slashes too but um th like this is the old version dates you know when wordpress first came out you know page id one two three and that's not very search engine friendly so go with post name post name that's the best right best route you also have the option to change the um category base and the tag base this kind of gives you an example let's say instead of saying categories you want it to be topics so um when you your url would instead of saying categories would like if you did an archive page for the uncategorized category, uh, it would look like this if you put topics in here. So there's that. And then privacy policy. Um, you have a built-in WordPress now comes with a built-in privacy policy page. Um, and there's content on it, but would highly recommend, um, where am I? Would highly recommend using uh, either Termageddon or Iubenda. Termageddon is a US based um, privacy policy generator, and Iubenda is Europe. I think they're in Germany. And Iubenda is particularly good. Well, they came out right after GDPR, if you're not familiar with that, that's a bunch of really strict laws that the EU came up with about three, four years ago about privacy. And uh, they, what they do is they generate, you, you put in the information about your, your company and your website, and they generate a privacy policy that you can put a code in on your privacy policy, and it populates the whole po privacy policy. And keeps it up to date. Now there's a US based one um, called Termageddon. It's run by people I met at a, a um, WordCamp three, four years, it's about three years ago. And it's Hans and Donata. And Hans is an ex uh, web, develop, web agency owner and Donata is a privacy attorney and they're married. So they've, Put their heads together and come up with uh, privacy policies that are they tr constantly track the laws about privacy around the country and the world and there's lots of new changes coming up all the time in the united states you know, california has their privacy laws and nevada has theirs and um, there's like 11 states that have pr separate privacy policies so they keep track of all that and build it into your privacy policy. And so that's very handy. So check those out for your privacy policy. And let's see here, we got here, we got through. So we got all that. Then there's the concept of Gutenberg. Has everybody heard of Gutenberg? Yeah, Gutenberg is, uh, the way that WordPress is going, that we used to have the basic classic editor, which was, you know, you put your title and then you had like a WYSIWYG uh, editor and you just type your stuff in there and, you know, drop a picture. You could do a little bit of HTML coding, um, but Gutenberg is a bills and blocks and they're still, it's still kind of coming along, uh, but it's made a lot of strides in the last three and a half years. And eventually that's going to be what we're using. Um, new WordPress installs will have Gutenberg enabled. If you don't like Gutenberg or don't wanna use Gutenberg, you can use, um, there's a plugin called Disable Gutenberg by Jeff Starr. Um, that knocks it down to where that you, you get the, the classic editor instead of the Gutenberg editor. Um, so if you're inclined to do that, go ahead and do that. I 
uh, probably two or three months ago, I decided, well, Gutenberg's made enough advances, so I'm going to start using it. Um, but you don't have to use it a lot, except for maybe on posts, because you're going to be doing most of your designing with, with Elementor. But Elementor is compatible with Gutenberg. Now, let's talk about plugins. Plugins. What plugins do you need for your starter site? Well, it depends on, when you're, on what you're trying to do. Um, you kind of need some essential plugins or essential functionality. If, you're, if your host doesn't provide it, you're going to need some kind of security plugin like WordFence. You're going to need an anti spam plugin, like in this case, anti spam B or Akismet, which is an anti spam plugin from WordPress. You get it at WordPress.org, uh, I believe, or is that WordPress.com? Can't remember. Uh, but just look up Akismet, A K I S M E T. Um, you might need a, if you're, Web, if your host doesn't provide backups, you use a black a backup plugin. Um, Updraft is a very popular one. Uh, a plugin we'll talk about here in a second. Migration, all, all in one WP migration, I think also does backups too. You're going to want an SEO plugin. Um, I have been going with Yoast SEO, but there's uh, new contenders. There's one that I've heard a lot of people talk about called Rank Math. Um, Excellent. Sorry? Excellent plugin. Rank Math is? Yeah. Cool. Love it. yeah. All right. I stopped using Yoast. Okay. Um, then there's image compression. Because um, we also want to build websites that are quick and fast and speedy. And one of the things that slows it down is trying to transmit images and there's software or plugins that can take your image and compress the actual file size to where it doesn't take so long to get up to to come go off from the server to the end user which speeds up the site so the image compression and in this particular instance i'm using short pixel for that and that's a free um, then there's optimization plugins. You, you, if you are involved in WordPress two years ago, maybe, when Google announced that they were going to start ranking websites on their speed, uh, optimizing for speed became the, the rage. And there's all kinds of tools, and some work better than others. And some are, work really well, but you have to do a zillion settings and one of the easiest ones to deal with, and actually does fairly perform fairly well, because I've performed head-to-head -head comparisons. And one that came out actually not too bad was Auto Optimize. It's free, and it does a fairly good job, and um, can optimize your, your your style sheets, your JavaScript, your HTML code, um, and more, depending on how sophisticated you want to get. So. You want to have an optimization plugin. More than likely, you're going to want to have a form builder plugin. And I use Gravity Forms, but there's a bunch of others. Um, there's all in Contact Form 7, I think is a big one. Um, WP Forms, Fluent Forms, list goes on. Um, and so, but you'll see I have more than just this. <laughs> um, I have the Elementor plugin and I have Elementor Pro. And the only Elementor add-on plugin that I have in my starter site every time is Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. This is coded up and produced by the same people who do the Astra Pro plugin, which turns Astra theme into um, that's what when you get the paid version, they, this plugin makes it more, gives it more functionality. And that's by Brainstorm Force. But uh, other ones I use, I use uh, plus add ons for Elementor. 
I've used essential add-ons for Elementor. Um, there's a bunch of little standalone things like um, Elementor custom skins, all kinds of things. But these are the ones I start with for as far as Elementor goes. I use Advanced Custom Fields Pro. Um, a lot of the website, if you if you build websites that have things like, um, or you want dynamic data to populate in certain places, you would use something like Advanced Custom Fields. Um, uh, let's see, I'll talk about that. Code Snippets is a really lightweight little plugin. If you've ever needed to add a function to your uh, functions.php file and you don't want to edit your theme, you can just do it with code snippets. And so I like that. Custom post type UI, that is a free plugin and that will allow you to, to set up custom post types. Let's say that you have a website, um, like I built a website last year that had, you know, they have team members, people who work at the company, and they all have their own page. And so that was a custom post type. They had um, real estate agents that, because this company was in construction, and they all had their own profile pages under agents. And that was done with a custom post type. Then there were properties that were custom post types. You can create all these different kinds of things with um, custom post type UI. And of course, we've talked about Elementor and Elementor Pro. Gravity Farms is the bomb, but it's a paid plugin. Um, oddly enough, I discovered last year that you, I don't know if any of you have run into this, but every now and again, you just get overwhelmed with uh, spam on your forms where people are filling out forms and, you know, they might actually they're filling them out it's not bots it's somebody taking the time to fill it out but you know they'll put their name and address and then they say oh and i have some really good sexy pictures of myself i want you to send you you know that kind of stuff or they might be selling some some kind of scammy stuff they'll put urls in the comment section and things like recapture and even uh, something in gravity forms called the honeypot that was not getting rid of it. And I had clients telling me, oh gosh, I'm getting too much spam. And I ran across this, this plugin, Gravity Form Zero Spam. It's a free plugin. And the sites that I was having those issues with, that, that stopped. It just ended when I put this plugin in. So if you're having issues with that, check that plugin out. Um, I have Redirection plugin in installed. This can come in handy um, when, let's say, because I have clients that sometimes want to do this, that you build a page for their site and it's, and it's been up for a year. And then they say, you know, I'd like to change the name of that page. And of course, all the SEO that they've accumulated over the last year is based on the old name. So if somebody were to search on that, that, that page, the names change so they wouldn't be able to find it. But read this redirection plugin creates, let's say that I have a page called um, What's New 2021. And I wanted to change it for What's New 20, 2022. I just changed that and then the URL changes and the website knows if somebody's coming for 2021 it'll automatically just redirect them to 2022 so that's very handy uh safe svg as um something that is, is getting to where it might not be that necessary soon um because an svg is a is a lot is a creates images that are not pixel based, they're vector based. They're done with lines and they're absolutely infinitely scalable. So SVG files are good for logos and retina devices to, you know, where if you have your logo and somebody's looking at it on a, on a Apple uh, iMac or on an iPhone, they, they, they're at double the resolution. 
And so those would tend to be blurred. So with SVG, it doesn't matter. They'll be super sharp. And the only other one I'll mention is Yoast Duplicate Post. This was um, bought by Yoast about six, eight months ago. I find this very handy. Like if I've created a post that has a particular layout or a particular page that has a layout that I like and I want to duplicate it, I just go to a page and I want to duplicate it. I just hit clone and it'll make a great, a, an exact copy. Now there, there are others um, that do this, but one of the things I like about uh, this duplicate post by Yoast is that when I duplicate it and I would say save the draft, it updates the URL for the page rather than just calling it the same page with a two after. So uh, those are the ones I like. So each one of us will develop um, their own list of preferred plugins. Point being is that you want to get them all, all of the plugins you use regularly. And if you have some that you use some of the time or a lot of the time, but you don't use them all the time, you go ahead and have them in your starter site. And then when you get going, if you don't need them, just delete them. And then if you have any, um, of course, when you, if you have any that require licenses, obviously you need to have the licenses installed and all that kind of good stuff. Um, let's see. So we've got our, before we migrate, before we finish up with the, the starter site, we want to make sure that- Eric, yep. may I say something? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. With uh, that safe SDG, it's not actually necessary because Elementor cleans the SVGs when they are uploaded. Correct, so well- that's, that's one point. Yeah. And another point, if you were using rank math, it includes the redirection, um, the plugin, I'm kind of, I mean, the functionality of our redirection that works pretty well and it's included. So that's a second plugin that you could avoid. Okay, so you're, you're, you're saying rank math does what I described that- um, For redirection, redirection yes. plugin does? Yeah, okay. and a I lot know. of other things. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, give it a check. I invite you guys to give it a check because cool. it has a lot of functionality, rank math. Okay, very cool. And uh, the thing with the SVG, um, I agree with you. Only thing that I, has held me back is when you um, enable SVG and uploads into with Elementor, let's see if I can, I don't remember where I can find this. Oh, right there, right there. Enable the filter to file up the upload. Yeah, Sorry. okay. Um, it says Elementor will try to sanitize the unfiltered files. Um, and because they didn't say they will, I thought, well, I'm gonna keep going using this for a while, so. That was my only thought on that. Why? Why I just didn't completely rely on Elementor for the SVGs. Okay. Uh, so you're also using ACF and advanced advanced custom types, right? For sorry. GPT, you're, what are you using for uh, for um, custom post types? Uh, custom post type UI right now. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. You know, if you use pods, you could do the custom post type and the find the fields. You will need two plugins. One will do, will surface. Okay. Um, with pods, you said it would take the place of this one. What would be the other one? The advanced custom fields. With custom types, you define the custom type. Right, 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 right. right. I got you. Yeah, it does both. Yeah. Well, I tell you what. Um, like we all kind of develop our favorites, and um, and I've used Advanced Custom Fields Pro for a long, long time, and I 
it works and it works in really, really well. So um, every, obviously everyone's free to use the plugins that they want to. And there are some duplicates of functionality, um, but, but you're right. And I think there's another one uh, aside from pods that seems like it starts with a T can't remember that, that similar type of deal. Um, and then Crocoblock might also make a, a product that does something similar. So, um, so we want to make sure all our plugins are up to date and have a license. We want to make sure our theme is up to date and we can check that here under dashboard updates. So we have the latest version of WordPress. We have um, all our plugins are up to date and our themes are up to date. So this would be ready to use. Now, if I were to come back a month from now and I wanna use it again, I need to go through and make sure everything's still up to date and I don't wanna change anything. But so this, I could, I, this would be ready to, to migrate. And it, how you do that kind of depends on your host and where you're migrating to. Now, with WP Engine, um, you can take your, your install that has your starter site. I'll show you real quick. Uh, let's see. Like, let's, and this is in, and in WP Engine, you have three areas you have production staging and development this is where the starter site is let's say that i want to copy it to staging although i can copy it to any other site that's on wp engine um, this way but what i would do is i say copy environment from here you know the starter site to the staging all databases and then um, review and confirm and it'll send send an email this is a different email address i have but um and it'll just cut it'll just copy it but maybe you don't have that set up with your hosting and there's a tool um that is very useful it's called all-in-one wp migration and this that with this tool you can it's a plug-in and it's free and it's very popular you see it's over four over four million installs and people can um, copy it'll make a copy of your website and it'll you can move it to any other website you want but you install the plug-in on the source website like your starter site you, you add the plug into that and export it essentially and you get a file you download your computer and then the new location where you want your website to go you install this plug in free install it and then you import you click import and you get the file off your computer and it'll bring it in over to the new site and update all the urls and all that good stuff for you and i i haven't used this in I've used this this year, but I've used it several times in the last year or two for on, on other situations and it works fine. Um, so you can be sure to check that out. And then if you want to know how to use it, I'm going to put a demo link on how to use it in the chat. So that you wanted to, it's a, I think it's an 11 minute video kind of shows you how that works. And so you have, um, you have your starter site, you can use over and over and over again. And you, once you get it set up, you have it you know, set up every time and you're ready to rock and roll. And, um, and, and I've been using the starter sites now for three years, maybe. 
and it's really helped a lot. Um, so does anybody on the call use starter sites? Brian, you do? Okay. Well, cool. Does anybody have any questions about this? I know I covered I covered it really fast, but we are limited on time. So, and of course, this is recorded. Anybody have any questions? I'm really interested. I think I'm going to give it a shot. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Well, then. Um, so that's pretty much covers. Brian, did we need? Did we? I miss anything that you can think of? Nope, you covered everything. I can tell you're saying you covered everything and you covered way too much. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that was perfect for the first one. Okay. Um, so if there's not any questions or issues about this, this idea, and of course this is part one of a series of how to, the workflow for building an Elementor WordPress website. And then later on, we'll go into um, how to set up templates. You know, it's, it's really good to do a whole bunch of stuff up front. We'll talk about, next time we'll talk about um, setting up your global fonts, your global colors ahead of time. Um, how to, uh, lost my train of thought now, getting everything prepared. Oh, and then setting up templates. Let's say you wanna set up your blog archive template, your single post archive template, your um, page template, your, you know, you might have different kinds of archive templates. Um, you might have, uh, you gotta have a template for a 404 page, a search results page, your header template, your footer template. And in the last year, you can pretty much build the entire website with Elementor. You don't need the, you don't need the header from the theme. You don't need the footer from the theme. Um, you can do all of it. And with Elementor, you can have different headers, different footers if you wanted on different pages. You could say, oh, well, I want to have this header on this page, but on all the post pages, I want the header to be different. So you can just set the display conditions. Um, not, I don't know of many themes that can do that. So, um, but we'll go into that uh, later on in this series. So. Having, having said that, I have a question. Sure. Why would you use Astra instead of using Hello? Why do I use Astra instead of Hello? Yeah. Well, partly because Astra was first. <laughs> hello, just, I've used Hello. And, and it kind of depends on um, what the site's going to be like, because Astra has, I don't know if I've got these set up or not. Uh, uh, there's Astra options. One of the things I like about Astra Pro is, is where is it? Custom layouts. And I can um, create custom layouts for for things. Um, That's the same the same uh, 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 builder that has uh, the template builder from Elementor. Right. What what mostly what I use this for are for things like hooks. Um, like if I want to add, this is kind of getting kind of deep. Um, but if I wanted to go to, where the heck did this go? Well, I'm not gonna get into that because it's kind of off the, off the page, but let's say um, if, If I wanted to add Google Analytics and any kind of code 
into to um, the header. I can do that with hooks. If I wanted to put a you do that with rank map also a a banner across the top of the page that's outside of the header. It's on top of the header. I can do that with hooks. Um, there's just a, a number of things, but I certainly will have to look into. It sounds like rank math is trying to be a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> it is. It is. Believe me. I mean, yeah. I, I've been using it for the last uh, probably year and a half, two years. Cool. I stopped totally using uh, uh, Yoast. No more. Yeah. And I'm replacing, uh, moving, uh, I moved about 20, 30 websites from Yoast to rank math. Okay. But it integrates with Elementor beautifully. Right, right, yeah. It was, uh, it integrated with Elementor before Yoast did. Yes. So, okay. Well, I'm certainly, I had taken a look at it about a year and a half ago, but when it first popped up on the radar, but I haven't looked at it in a while, so I'll have to do that again. Thank you, Oscar. Give it a check. All righty, um, we got. We try to set aside some time at the end for just general elementary questions. Is there anything that any of you have been working on that you um, need some help with? Have you tried the containers yet? Sorry. Have you tried the containers yet? Yes. If you um, if you were to go to let's see here, give me a sec here. Uh, we did a meetup on that. Although containers are still uh, experimental, I think we was, Brian was it last month's meetup that we did containers. Yes. I almost think it was two months ago. Now I think about it. Let me look and see. We were, we were ahead of a lot of the other groups. Actually, it was we did. Uh, actually, we did two consecutive ones. We did part one and part two. Um, I'll give you the links here. This is Webflow Interaction. Sorry about that. The only tool that. Let's make sure that works. So we click on this, set to convert. Okay, so let me go here, back. In, in a... Okay, here is. Here's chat uh, chat oh, okay. chat there we go okay this is the link to the first um, meetup we did on that was part one it was called elementary flexbox container part one you're not sharing though sorry you're not sharing the screen no i put it in no, chat, put it in the chat. Oh, okay okay i'm sorry no problem so we click on this and and here's the second one so and then if you were to go to and if you go to these there's a whole, we've got uh, all the, uh, and then of course you can go to the, let me share the screen again. Um, share screen. See the Elementor page screen? Yes. Okay. If you go to events, let's see, does it have past events? Uh, calendar. The 
Just use the arrow. Use the arrow. I'm looking for, let me get our group here. Uh, North America, go to county. Go to the elementary Gwinnett County um, group page and then past events, you can watch it here too. Um, Cause it, it's, a, it's already there. So you can just do it right there. And let's let me go here. And then that's uh, part two and then part one right here. So if you were to go to, this will take you to the events page for um, our group. So I'll put that in chat. And then you can watch them there too. So yes, we did with containers and can't wait for them to be part of uh, the, the main functionality of Elementor because it really uh, adds some great flexibility and reduces the, the DOM bloat, the amount of code that goes into a page. So um, yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I think it was released, Carrie, as a 3.6, if I'm correct. Well, out, it, I looked and it looks like it's still in alpha. Oh, okay. Let me look here. Yeah, three point six four. Hang on a sec, I'll see. Uh, Flexbox container alpha plugins. Yeah, yeah, I updated all these today, so it should be recent. The current ones. Okay. So, might be three point seven when it comes out okay. live, but and we say it's ex and experiments. Um, you can use these, but they don't want, they don't, they suggest that you don't use it on a, a, a production site because it's not hundred percent ready for a prime time. It's closer along. Cause I think back when Brian and I did the, the meetup on containers, it was in beta version and, uh, now it's an alpha. So. Correct. Okay. Anybody else have anything they've been struggling with? Yeah, by the way, I have the, I have the, the right here on my screen, the dashboard for rank math. I don't know if you want to see it. And sure. For to, to, to have a kind of a sure. of it. So let me screen my, let me share my screen for a second. This is everything it does. I mean, it has a 404 monitor. It, goes into the ACF content if you use ACF, has uh, the accelerated mobile pages also mm -hmm. are monitored. You can integrate analytics, can work with BB Press and Body Press. It has a new feature that is content artificial intelligence that is suggests you keywords based on your content, which is cool. Mm -hmm. It helps on the SEO of images, setting up the alternate uh, and the title tags. Right, right, right. You can request in instant indexing and Bing and Yandex as a link counter. I mean, it has a look. Here's the redirections. Got you. We're talking the schema for structured data. Right. Uh, SEO analysis works with the site map. I mean, it's a lot of so things. Is this. Um... With it's all the features, is this is this plugin like really bloated or is it pretty? No, no, you, you just uh, activate and deactivate whatever you want. Right, right. Okay. So and for... now is this a is this a free version or a paid version? No, oh, this is the free version. Okay. Is there a paid version? There is a paid version. Okay. Wow. But I mean, I've been able to manage almost everything with the free version. So just uh, my invitation, give it a look. Yes, sir. well worth it. Looks like it. Cool, it definitely baby. is. All right. So you learn something, no matter what, you always learn something somewhere. 
That's what we are here for. That's right. Yeah, to share. I mean, that's the objective of all this. Yes, sir. Sharing, I've learned from you. I've learned from Gabe, from uh, Brian, from many people. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So. So, very good. Thank you very much for that information. Oh, no problem. Anybody else have any questions? I'm going to look in, into Yes, ma'am. I have a question. When you were showing your um, WP Engine um, hosting site, and there's the three the three areas: the development, the staging, and the production. Right. Do you, do you use all three, or because I typically have just been using the staging and production site? Well, it, it kind of depends. Uh, and it kind of depends. Uh, in these, some of these areas that you saw with three, like down here, I do a lot of, a uh, lot of these training things. And so I, these are multiple versions of um, trainings. You know, some of these are, some of these webs, these uh, installs, and, and these are uh, not actually really live installs, they're more like transferable installs. Um, and they don't count against my uh, limit for sites, but um, usually what it's, what it's meant, to, meant for, there's a lot of different things you can do with it. But um, if you were to, let's say, you have a, a, a website and it's on WP Engine and it's established and it's live and you want to build, they want their new, a new version of their website, but they still want the old site to be live until the, the very last minute. So let's say this is a frame shop here. They have their current site, but let's say they want to build a new, a, a new fancy schmancy one with new features and stuff. Well, rather than cobbling onto the existing site, I can create a new version of it and get it all where they say, yes, sir, that is wonderful. And then all I have to do is copy the environment over to the production environment. And it, you know, it, three minutes maybe, then it, automatically cover, it goes goes there. That's largely how I use it. Um, sometimes I'll use them for like the, particularly the develop the dev area. I'll use that for experiments. Um, like um, want to try something like off the wall. I can use that. I also use these sec these staging and development uh, environments for making copies let's say i've done this several well a bunch of times that i'm rebuilding an existing site that was hosted somewhere else well i will use the like the all-in-one wp migration pro i will copy the old site over to staging and keep it there so i have a copy and because I don't have any control over the other dom the other host or the other place where it was held. So that when I'm building the new site, it comes in handy sometimes because people will say, maybe I'm maybe I missed something. And they say, well, what about that page that talked about Joe Blow's new Corvette or something? And I say, where was it? And they go, well, I can't remember because I don't see the site. I can go in and look, I have a copy of the old site and I can look for it. Um, and also I can have access to all the resources without having to have all the resources taken up space on the new site. Um, I find it very handy. Um, and, and it also kind of protects me because sometimes a year later or six months later, somebody will come back and say, well, because people, you know, you, you ask them to proof a site before it goes live and they say they do it. And then 
three or four or five months later to come back and say, oh, you didn't do X, Y, Z, and it, it used to be here, and it's not there, and, and if I have a copy of the old site, I can see if it was there or not. Um, it's, it's, it, it has proved to be a good insurance package, there's a uh, policy. So you can use it for all kinds of things, um, but most people, I think, use it in, in the scenario of they've got, they copy their production site to staging, make changes on the staging site and copy it back to live. That's off, I think that's kind of the general idea. And then development is when there's big differences. Okay. But I use it for all kinds of things. And is there a, there a tool with that platform that just allows you to push? So if you're, if you're making a change, um, on, on the staging site or vice versa that you can just sort of push the changes back and forth without copying the whole site over? No, it, no, it pushes the whole site. Whole site. Uh, although I think it's smart enough to know that, well, if this is already there, I don't need to copy this part. Um, I think there's some, um, like if your sites are 500 megabytes, and it's copying one to the other that were basically the same, except there was a few changes. I don't think it's gonna copy 500 megabytes worth of data. It's gonna copy the parts that need to be changed. Um, and a lot of that is database stuff, not actual image files and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but no, it, it, you don't have the, and, and now they can, if you were using something like uh, WCLI, which D WP Engine has, which is command line interface with your website, you could do that, but you pretty much need to be a coder to do that. And most of the people that we talk to in, with Elementor are, are not coders. That's part of the reason they use Elementor. Um, but it works just fine. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I'm um, going to be using WP Engine uh, for a new site um, in the next month or so. So, so thank you for that. It's going to be a new. It's going to be a great improvement because um, the company I work for, they're using an IT company to host their sites, and it's been, they use an IT company. Oh yeah, yeah. I've run into that. Yeah. So I can't. I have no access to the back end, basically. Right, um, into a turf war. They don't want to let go of their little, little well, kingdom. <laughs> it's not that so much. It's just, um, you know, when I couldn't do anything on the back end, like there was no, no administration tools to see the back end and the files. And I could only access what they allowed me to see through the FTP site. And yeah, oh, it was quite frustrating. Sure, sure. So I couldn't do, I couldn't create my own uh, staging environment and they didn't provide a staging environment. Or if they did, they'd set it up and then they would charge us several hours worth of time to set up a new site mm -hmm. that's used for staging. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to switching over to this, to WP Engine. Yep, I've been very happy with them. Um, I've used them probably for about 10 years or so. Um, the reason I went over, I knew I've known about WP Engine probably for about 12 years. I used, when I first started, uh, or after I started building, I've been building websites since 1995, but I started doing WordPress websites 10, 11 years ago. Initially, um, you know, I didn't know anything. I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know. And I, you know, there were places like, uh, I guess I can say it, HostGator, mm -hmm. that you had, you could get a reseller account for $25 a month, and you could host as many websites as you wanted. And I thought, wow, I could host these websites and charge somebody $15, $20 a month and only pay $25 a month. You know, I could undercut HostGator at the time and still make money. 
And of course, the old adage is true, you get what you pay for. So I had by that time, I probably had 15 websites on HostGator, WordPress websites. And I had, uh, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the software, uh, but uh, Uptime Robot, that's what it was. I had Uptime Robot running on the sites. And that, what it does is it monitors if the site is up or not. It pings the site every five minutes. And if it gets a, pot, a good response, it's cool. If it doesn't get a good response, it sends you an email and says your site is down. And when it comes back up, you get an email saying your site is up. Well, one morning I was sitting at my desk working and all of a sudden my email box just started filling up. Brrr, such and such site down, such and such sites down, such and such sites down. All the, the HostGator sites went down. All the reseller sites in their whole network went down. And there were thousands of them that went down all on the same day because they had done something. They were had done some technical changes to one of their servers and just broke it. And um, probably the worst job in the world that day was to be working technical support for HostGator. So, um, so then I decided I'm going to, I'm going to get some good hosting. And I went over to WP Engine. Um, I think I started out with a plan that had 10 sites. And then I got, went to the one, I don't remember, 30 sites and and then I got grandfathered in to as they changed their pricing models um, to where I, I have a fair amount of sites now with them. So I've been pretty happy. But I know people who are very happy with uh, Cloudways and Kinsta. Uh, not some, well, I don't want to bad mouth like people, but, um, but th those are good ones. Soon. Thank you. Thank you. You're for that. welcome. Anybody else had any good experiences with the host? Who do you use, Guy? Perhaps Guy's not around. Background has always been. Um, good before I moved on to WP Engine. Um, they have great support site ground and they're pretty affordable as well. Yeah, they're um, it's I can't, trying to remember. It seemed like their pricing was kind of cryptic. Uh, maybe I'm remembering wrong. From to Anderson off to the So why did you move Brian then if you found site ground so good? To be honest, I'm trying, I was trying to remember that myself. Um, I can't remember because I'm definitely playing probably double the cost. Um, I can't really remember to be honest with you. Well, I, when I have gone to um, WordCamps and, you know, the, all the, many of the, the hosting people are sponsors at WordCamps. And I've gone over and talked to them. And, um, and as I talk about the different things that we always get to a place to where I go, eh, I don't know, that doesn't quite fit what I need. Um, and I, I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with Chris Lemma. Um, he's a popular word speaker on the WordPress circuit. Um, and it seems like he worked for SiteGround at some point um, or some division of their company. And uh, he was, and we had this long conversation at WordCamp US 2018 or something. And uh, we just uh, agreed to disagree as to what the best way to go was. So, so. I have a question. Yes, sir. 
Can I, uh, it's Mark Lee's. Can I sh can I share my screen? Sure. Okay. So, question is on the Elementor form with widget. Okay. Uh, created a form where I want people to answer a few questions. Okay. I'd like it to be all vertical, so one right after the other. Okay. If we look at uh, the form field, your age, it's, you know, it's like 30, 40 characters across. Is there a way to shorten that without using the column width? Because if you, if you change the column width, it'll wrap it up to the next row or take the field that's below it and wrap it on its same, the same row. Does that make sense? No, yeah, it makes sense. Um, well, you'd prob you could probably do it with CSS. Um, Who's she? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but usually what people want to do on a form is have the have it be you know kind of all about this you know, if if you have two things i mean you could take the type of relationship problem and your age and both make them 50 percent and and then how old is um your spouse or partner and then one below that make them 50 percent and um Is that better design or? Yeah. yeah, I think so. And as long as your content will fit in there, because you're right, you don't need to have a, a big long field for something that's only going to be two or three characters. In fact, sometimes, um, sometimes I'll do them three across, depending on uh, what the content is. But you could probably have. Um, how old is your spouse or partner be 50% and how long did you date before marrying could be 50%. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate the information. I have to jump off. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the okay, next one. Okay, Oscar, thanks for your tips on rank math. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure always, you know, you okay. know what we're here for. So thank you very much and uh, keep in touch. Brian, okay. behave and keep carrying on track. I'll do my best. Take care, Oscar. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Well, we got a few more minutes. Anybody else have a question or something they need to learn about? Hi, um, I have a question. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Nika. Uh, someone had talked about Ionos as a web host, and I wanted to find out, get more information on their experience, basically. Ionos? It's still here. Yeah. I've not heard of that. Did anybody else? Uh, it used to be one and one, and I'm the one that uses it. Right. They used to be one and one. One and one sounds familiar, but that, gosh, that seems like that was years and years and years ago. Well, they're still here. Well, so what was your experience like, Dennis, with uh, which uh, Nike is. Um, Nikkei. Nikkei. Yes. I've got experience? everything I'm running on there right now. Okay. I love them. Okay. Now I'm using their shared hosting, but right. I'm using their uh, WP Unlimited plan. And uh, I think it's great. They have their site set up right. The uh, yeah. PHP mail works like it's supposed to, and it goes through. Okay. Well, good. If you're not running really big sites, 
with a whole lot of uh yeah i wouldn't put a woocommerce site in yeah yeah it's, you you need the resources of uh that's one of the you know one of the considerations of uh shared versus cloud or a vpn um that right. is resources and if you're you know if you have a site that um like I have a site that is for a fall festival and 11 months out of the year, it gets, I don't know, three or 400 hits a day. Um, but on the days of the festival, it gets like between, it gets around 18 to 20,000 hits a day, which isn't out of, I mean, it's not like millions of hits, but that's a pretty big jump. So it needs to be on a place where it can handle that kind of, surge and and activity so and 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 it, a lot of it's on mobile because people are walking around at the festival and they're looking at it their website on their phone and so it needs to be zippy so i would a website like that i'd be hesitant to put it on shared hosting um but most a lot of sites are fine on shared hosting uh, mm -hmm. but okay. well we're just like thank we're, you. I'm sorry. Thank you, thank you for the answers. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, looks like we're about out of time. Um, do you have any, anybody have anything, they, final thing they gotta, gotta ask? Just really can't, can't sleep tonight unless they ask it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I really appreciate y'all showing up, sticking around and um, we'll be, uh, posting the recording probably over the weekend. So I, I know I went through a whole bunch of stuff really quickly, but you can watch it on the, the video and, you know, stop it when, you know, you want to make a note and it should, I think it will give you the information you need. So thank you for coming and we'll see you next month for part two. Thank you, everyone. Hey, thanks, thanks a lot, Carrie and Brian. Bye. 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 Bye.